Hi, I'm David Gonzalez, and I would like to welcome you to this very special episode of Saturday Morning Live at the National, coming to you direct from Washington, D.C. Established in 1980, Saturday Morning Live is the National Theater's best loved community and educational program. Stay tuned for today's episode. Welcome to Gonzo's Multiverse, where we're going to look at the very small, the very large, and everything in between, plus some amazing artist friends, some cool characters, music, poetry, and some surprises. Let's get on with the show. begin by saying uh, welcome back to school and I hope that you enjoyed your coronavirus vacation. Um, we shall now get back to work because you uh, are expected to be good students and to continue in uh, learning all the very important subjects that we have prepared for you. So without further ado, I would like to... who I am, and I don't like it when people make assumptions about me. When I say people, I mean like other fish and creatures in the sea and maybe even you, like people people, because they don't know me. They assume I'm going to take a big bite, a big juicy bite, I'm, but I'm not. I don't like to eat living things, the blood, the guts, it, 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 oh, it's not me. I'm a vegan. I don't like it when people make assumptions about me. Does that ever happen to you? People think you're one way and they just kind of assume that that's how you are and they treat you that way and you realize like they don't even know you? I mean, it's terrible. You know what I'm talking about. Say because you're a kid, people think you're like babyish or something like that. Where you look a certain way and they treat you certain way that they think that they have to or whatever. It's crazy. People gotta take a minute to get around, you know, ask a question. Big deal, you ask a question. Like, what do you like? Me? I like vegetables. I like kelp. Kelp is delicious. There's so many different varieties of kelp. You'd be surprised. And seaweed? Forget about it. It's amazing. I don't like to eat living things. And I wish other sea creatures would just ask me a question, you know. <laughs> they see me coming, right? They start freaking out. They, whoo, they're gone. Here are the seals, they come, whoo, they're gone. Human beings, whoo, they see me, they freak out, whoo, they're gone. But they don't know me. That's not me. I don't bite living things. I bite kelp. Yeah, I'm a shark. I got big teeth, I'm a big shark, I got the dorsal fin, all that stuff. But I'm a vegan shark. That's who I am. Who are you? Hmm? Just be you. You be you, I'll be me. That's the way it should be, alright? Alright, I gotta look for some kelp. See you later.
Hey, hey, Donnie, let me ask you a question. Why is Santa Claus always so happy? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, Donald. Why is Santa Claus so happy? Santa Claus is so happy because he lives in the present. <laughs> That's very good. Very good. Living in the present is good. Not living in the past. Not living in the future. Living in the present. Like right here, right now. Like be here now. That's what they say. Be here now. I like that. Daryl, I got a question for you. Why are ghosts such bad liars? Huh? Why are ghosts such bad liars? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Donnie, why are ghosts such bad liars? Ghosts are such bad liars because you can see right through them. Huh? <laughs> That's good. I like that. I like that. You got to be able to see through people unless they be... All covered up, they don't understand who they are. People got to be able to see through to the heart of people, you know what I mean? That's right, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly the whole point. I agree, that's a very good lesson. Big and bad, my name is Vovo. I'm big and bad. Vovo was a little boy who had three sisters who were married to the three biggest, strongest hunters in the village. And every day Vovo would watch as they would leave the village with their nets and their bows and their arrows. And at night they would come back with fish, birds, and sometimes even a dead deer. And Bobo wanted to be a hunter just like them. He had a bow and an arrow made of 100% imagination. He was just a kid, but he wanted to be a hunter too. And one day, he shouldn't have. But Bobo snuck into the hunter's house. And once he saw the real bow, he had to touch it. And once he held it, he had to pick up the arrow. And once he had them in his hands, he just had to pull that arrow back. And when he felt that power, he knew he had to go hunting. So Bobo stepped outside into the forest. My name is Vovo. I'm big and bad. My name is... And he saw the bottom branch of a big tree. There was a little nest, and in the nest there were five baby bluebirds. <laughs> My name is Vovo. I'm big and bad. My name is Vovo. You are making me mad. And then Vovo said, just kidding. And the birds were like, Vovo, come here. Vovo, you freaked us out with the arrow, but Vovo, we have a present for you. Vovo, reach your hand under our nest and take your gift. Vovo reached his hand under the nest and pulled out a little wooden bowl. Thanks for the bowl, birds. Don't be disappointed, Vovo. That's a magic bowl. If you take that bowl down to the river and fill it halfway, the water will go down and you could take 10 fish. But remember, Vovo, only fill it halfway. Whatever. So Vovo takes the bowl down to the river and he fills it halfway. And sure enough, the water gets sucked down and the fish are flopping all around. He picks up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 fish, puts them in a bag, puts the bag on his back and returns to the village. And when the hunters see him with that bag of fish, they say, hey, Vovo, where did you get those fish? Oh, it's this magic bowl 
a magic ball. Let me see that. Give me that thing, Vovo. How does it work? Be careful. Take it to the river, but only fill it halfway. Yeah, right, Vovo. You think you know more about fishing than we do? Come on, you guys. Let's go play with Vovo's magic ball. And of course, they take the bowl down to the river, but they fill it all the way. So some of the water drips over the lip and falls back down. And then, whew, lightning bolts crash, wind blows, the hunters are thrown into the river and almost drown. They come back to the village, soaked and terrified. Vovo said, guys, what happened to you? <gasps> what happened to us? You and your magic bowl, that's what happened to us, almost got us killed. But, but where is my bowl? Oh, your bowl got swept away. But, that was my favorite bowl. Vovo goes down to the river but he cannot see the ball. It's gone. And tears fill his eyes. And one of them drops off his cheek, falls to the ground, and he hears And when he looks down, he sees in the water a little golden fish. And it says, Volvo, don't cry. I have a gift for you. Volvo, take this dart for your blowgun, but only put it in halfway. Thank you, my friend. And the fish swims away. Volvo has a little straw that he uses as a blowgun. He puts it between his lips and puts the dart in halfway. And he whoo, releases it so that it flies up into the air, does one, two, three turns, and then thump, lands in the ground, right in front of him, and right behind it fall, blop, 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 three giant birds. Vovo takes them, strings them together, flips them over his back, and returns to the village with those beautiful birds. And the hunters say, Vovo, where did you get those birds? It's this magic dart. A magic dart, let me see. Give me that. How does it work, Vovo? Be careful. Only put it in halfway. Yeah, right, Vovo. You think you know more about hunting than we do? Come on, you guys. Let's go hunt with Vovo's magic dart. And of course, the hunters put their dart all the way in and they whoo, release it. And the dart flies up into the air and whoo, disappears over the horizon. The hunters are looking and waiting and looking and waiting and they don't see behind them the three hawks that land on their backs and whoo, tear their clothes to shreds. The hunters run back to the village, their hearts pounding. They are full of fear. What happened to you guys, says Vovo. What happened to us? You and your magic dart almost got us killed, that's what. Where, where is my dart? Oh, your dart is gone. That was my favorite dart. Vovo goes out into the field to look for his dart. But he can't find it. Then he looks up into the sky and sees swooping in broad circles a gigantic eagle that lands right in front of him and says, Vovo, I have a gift for you. Take this golden rattle, but Vovo, only shake it one time. Vovo takes the golden rattle from the eagle. The eagle flies off. Vovo brings the rattle behind his ear, 
behind his head. He sends it way back and then he shakes it one time. Did I do it right? Did I do it loudly enough? Maybe I should do it again. Yeah, I'll do it again. He brings the rattle behind his ear, behind his head. He sends his arm back and then Vovo hears a low grumbling roar. and the earth opens up a hole right in front of him and he looks down and floating up out of the earth is a gigantic dead deer. It rises 10 feet up into the air and then boom, lands on the ground. Vovo looks at the rattle, looks at the deer, looks at the rattle, looks at the deer. Cool rattle. He puts the rattle in his pocket and he drags the deer all the way back to the village. And when the hunters see it, they say, Vovo, where did you get that deer? Oh, it's this magic rattle. Give me that thing. How does it work, Vovo? Be careful. Only shake it one time. Yeah, right. You think you know more about hunting than we do, Vovo? Come on, you guys. Let's go play with Vovo's magic rattle. And of course, they take the rattle into the forest and they shake it and 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 sh This thing is a piece of junk. And the rattle hits the ground. And they too hear that sound, that low rumbling sound. And then the earth opens up a huge hole and out of the hole leaps a jaguar who snatches one, two, three hunters and brings them down into the earth. The hole closes. Vovo waits and he waits. He worries. And in the morning, he goes to look for them. And he sees a place where the earth was disturbed. And he finds his rattle. But they never came back. They never came back. And Vovo kept that rattle. And he remembered what the eagle said. Only shake it one time. And when his people were hungry, he would shake it one time. And when there was a feast or a party, he would shake it one time. Only one time. And when he was an old man, he gave that rattle to his daughter. And she obeyed the eagle's call. And when she was an old woman, she gave it to her son who obeyed, who gave it to his daughter, who gave it to her son. And the golden rattle is out there somewhere. And if it comes to you, remember, the eagle spirit, only shake it one time.
Barbara Bash, what do you call what you do? I call myself a calligraphic artist. A what? Calligraphic artist, which is the word calligraphy, comes from the Greek, and it means beautiful writing. And it is beautiful writing. So the meeting of sort of art and words. And, and language. And language. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. How do you do it? I mean, what are your tools and how do you go about it? Well, I use all kinds of tools to make marks on paper that most of the time are connected with something about the alphabet. Although beautiful writing could be just a gesture that lands on the page. I think the crucial calligraphic element is that it you don't touch it up afterwards. It's direct. So you do it one time. You do it one time. It's fresh. Cool. So um, I work with pens, I work with brushes, I work with sometimes um, thick pencils. Um, anything that I can slide on a surface that will make a mark. And what's in here? So this is some Sumi ink which is a Japanese ink that's made from the soot of um, wood burned. And so it's very, uh, has a fragrance and there's a richness of the blackness of it. Wow. And is this a special kind of brush you're using? Well, this particular one is just a watercolor brush, but I do have all kinds of oriental brushes and I make my own big brushes. And so I just am looking for brushes everywhere I go. Sometimes I find them in surprising places. Cool. And what is it about being a calligraphic artist that you love? <laughs> well, I would say it's that it's a joining of what is inside one with a way of expressing that through beautiful marks that become words that become sentences so it's a it's a bringing the inner out and expressing that with beauty that seems to have an enlivening awakening effect on me and others sometimes penmanship is a job a yes. chore that yes. we have to learn yes. you've turned that around and made it into something you love to do into an art form and it's true that it's working with that sense of form and freedom. Mm -hmm. That's the line you're working with. And it's always been a really interesting, alive, tightrope for me to walk on. Form and freedom. Barbara Blash, calligraphic artist. Is that cool or what? <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you.
High flyer, sky rider, worm catcher, bee snatcher, glide soaring dream maker, nest weaver, song singer, twirler, chirper, swooper, superstar of the air. Rising, diving, chasing, gracing the wind, alighting on a tree, a chance to see the superstar of the air. Robin, bluebird, dove, wren, falcon, hawk, sparrow, then cardinal, jay, hummingbird, crow. So many wonderful birds to know, each with wings, a beak, and claws. Each one's beauty gives us pause. Up and through and down low to the orchard, the branch, the feathered nest, the superstar of the air deserves a rest. Welcome to the Microverse, where I'll show you some seriously awesome things of the micro, micro, deep down, tiny, weeny, weeny, tiny world. Come on, let's go. What is this?
That's our show. Hope you had a great time. Espero que tuvieron un buen tiempo conmigo. Next time, there'll be more in Gonzo's for joining us for today's episode of Saturday Morning Live at the National, made possible by generous funding from the J. Williard and Alice S. Marriott Foundation and donations from viewers like you. For details on upcoming episodes and to learn more about the National Theater, visit us at nationaltheater.org. We look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>